So once you guys have found like a, a, a record or you've dug and you found these records, then what, what's the next step for you guys? Sometimes if the sample's like really, really dope, I'm like, damn, how am I, how am I attack this right here? You know, I, I kind of, you know, live with it for a second before I touch it. And then I just, one day I wake up and just go to it and do whatever comes. And that's how I approach everything. Now that, how about, Rev, like, let's get you involved a little bit in there. Recently, like the last couple of years, since, you know, like you're trying to do music for TV and movies, you know, you got to, you know, replay it. You got to have, you know, you got to build other elements on top of it and bury it and, you know, kind of treat it as, a, as an instrument instead of just kind of being stuck and relegated to what the sample has to offer. You know, you get, you know, play keys or, you know, whatever, horns, anything you can do to it to make it bigger and better. Any of you and the rest of you guys? Um, my approach is usually, it depends on what I'm using. Um, a lot of times if I'm on the MP, what I'll do is, because that's like the fastest machine because there's just buttons, whereas when you're on the computer, it's just a mouse and a keyboard. So with the MP, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll have a record and I'll go through it. Once I find a section that I like, I'll just start taking it and sampling it in pieces. Some people will take it and get the whole thing and then go and try and chop it up. But my thing is I'm kind of making the beat in my head as I'm listening to the sample. So I'll go say, all right, I'm sampling this two seconds here, this three seconds here, this four seconds there, and this is gonna be the turnaround. This is gonna be the intro. Have them all laid out on the pads. And then for me, the advantage is once I have it, being that I'm already chopping it as I'm sampling it, I can go back and just start hitting the pads randomly and start coming up with other patterns that you might not have heard just from listening to it straight through. Okay, word. Ninth? I, I, I guess the most important thing for me, and I think I can pass it on to producers um, coming up after us, um, as the day goes by, the, the, the range of originality gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And so from, from when I started making beats, I think the situation is you want to find, if you sample, finding a sample that sounds like you is very important. Um, I, I just ran across a sample that Pete sampled for, we rolled for, for Jim Jones and Max B. And uh, wah, 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 that sounds like him. That sounds like a sample that he would use. I run across samples all the time that, that I'll, I'll play it and the joint is hot, but I'm like, Oh, that sounds like some Just Blaze shit, man. I can't, I can't mess with it. That's funny. That's funny. New, real quick, um, back to the sampling question with, with you, New Mark. Is there any, any way that you go about the sample? Well, I used to procrastinate quite a bit and just kind of feel it out. But So now I dump the whole record into my computer. I grab what I want, and I just take little bites of it. And then I take the original record and I let it clash with my beat. I just, let, I just play the record over the beat, not even trying to put on time. And if little parts pop out, oh, wow. I grab those parts and I put them in the beat. Oh, wow. I don't, I don't bother beat matching. Like, I, I take all, everything I learned about a DJ, DJ and I throw it out the window and I just let the record play. And then once it goes by once and I don't hear anything, I put it on one more time to see if it lands in some other spots. And if it doesn't work, go to another record. Wow. Okay. Okay. Wow.